Good evening and welcome to the last episode of the ABCs of Faith Lent edition. I'm Dino. And I'm Larry, and this is a show that helps you know so you can grow. For our final topic for the Lenten edition of ABCs of Faith, we are going to be discussing Holy Week. And you know what? We're doing it just a little bit ahead of time, Larry. A little bit ahead of time intentionally. Yeah, because we want to get you ready for Holy Week, which starts on Sunday with Palm Sunday. It does. And next Wednesday, we have something special planned. Absolutely. There's like going to be a musical concert. It's going to be a worship presentation for Holy Week. It's going to be at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. You're not going to want to miss it. Great music, great teaching. Be there next week at 7. But this is the last episode of this. It is. And it's been fun. It has been fun. Yeah. So um, you, you want to just kind of kick things off, Larry? We're going to go day by day. We're going to go day by day, which is going to start us with the triumphant entry and Palm Sunday, yeah. essentially. Yeah. So this is uh, Jesus and his disciples had stayed, I guess, around the Bethany area. And then they're getting ready to roll into Jerusalem. Essentially, Jesus requests this donkey and this colt. And this is specifically to fulfill prophecy yeah. from the book of Zechariah. So that's really, really cool. And then as they're coming into town, there's a crowd of people. Um, all it says is a large crowd. So we don't know if that was you know, 25 people or 100 people or, or even more. Right. We, we really don't know. But at some point, somebody starts this chant, and, and they've got these palm leaves, and they're putting cloaks uh, in the road in front of them. And yeah. so it's like this whole processional type thing. They're excited about Jesus. Most of the people there had heard of Jesus, some of his teachings, some sure. of the miracles. You know, there were people around that had seen his ministry already. So right. there's a lot of excitement in the air. And the thing that the people are chanting is directly from the book of Psalms, which is really, really cool. Yeah. What are they chanting? Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Yep. Yeah. That's pretty cool stuff. And that moves us on from that party to what we call Holy Monday and Holy Tuesday, for lack of better terms. Mm -hmm. These are just kind of generic ways that we reflect things happened on those days of Holy Week. They're not huge things. They kind of get glossed over. But um, the Synoptic Gospels especially record a few things about Jesus cursing a fig tree, uh, cleansing a temple, mm -hmm. responding to questions of his authority. And um, John's Gospel will put these events in different places or not include them at all. But the Synoptics, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, will place them at the end of Jesus' life mm -hmm. right after this triumphal entry into Jerusalem. I think the cleansing of the temple kind of gets the most attention because you can imagine, um, you know, with the temple leaders and all going after Jesus, right. he's in the temple clearing out all the money changers. He wants to restore the holiness and the sacredness of the place and not have it become what he calls a den of robbers, yeah. um, you know, some sort of marketplace where everyone's kind of making a buck. So he uh, cleanses the temple, and that probably does contribute to the idea that the religious authorities are scratching their heads going, wait a second, this guy is causing some trouble, mm -hmm. and we need to get him out of here. So yeah. on Holy Tuesday, all we really observe is that Christ predicted his death was coming. And so, okay. Yeah. Before we get to Wednesday, which has a very interesting name, I'll let you kind of throw that name at us yes. in a minute, but um, you mentioned the Synoptic Gospels sure. and then John's Gospel. Yeah. And I, I like reading John's Gospel sometimes because it was written so late that he throws these different perspectives in. And so even on Palm Sunday, the triumphant entry, at the end of that section, he throws this in there. He says, at first his disciples did not understand all of this. Only after Jesus was glorified. So this is after the events of Holy Week, right? Yeah. After the resurrection, after the transfiguration and all of that. He says, only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. It's yeah. pretty exciting. It is. And it really ties everything together with, again, the entry. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, once Jesus was glorified, the cursing of the fig tree makes more sense. The cleansing of the temple makes more sense. Absolutely. Uh, predictions of his death, obviously, are, are Old Testament prophecies. Yeah, so. exactly. Even the last verse of that uh, chapter in John says, So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. So the Pharisees, before he even gets into town and 
and does the things you were talking about with throwing out the money changers and all, yeah. the Pharisees are already scratching their heads and wondering if it, he's not making just maybe too many waves. Yeah, and that brings us to this plot that really starts to unfold on the Wednesday of Holy Week. It does. Which we just learned last week mm -hmm. from Paul. From Paul. This might be just a British thing, we're not sure, but it's referred to as spy Wednesday. Yes. Uh, it's it's a horrible day in Holy Week because what we're looking at is is Judas, and you'll tell us about that in a sec, but it mm -hmm. does have a cool name. Yeah, it, it, interesting name. At least if you're from England, you understand that when you say Spy Wednesday, it's the day that Judas it makes, makes the decision and agrees to betray Jesus for that 30 pieces of silver. So yeah. Uh, other than that, we don't know what the disciples or Jesus were doing on Wednesday, really. Yeah, there's, we, there's not a, really a record in any of the Gospels. Right. Um, I know if I was traveling and doing all of these things, maybe I was a little bit tired, and maybe I just rested and kind of hung out a little. Yeah. Which brings us to Thursday. Which is the day of the Passover. They're all coming to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover festival. And so Jesus is going to get together with his disciples on Thursday and have a meal. But the meal takes a sudden turn because mm -hmm. Jesus is not only predicting things like that he's going to be betrayed, that he's going to be denied. Um, he serves his disciples by washing their feet. And most importantly, and this is, this is how we get to Maundy Thursday, he gives a new commandment and he institutes this meal, the Lord's Supper, mm -hmm. and he tells everyone to continue doing this in remembrance of him. Um, the word mandi is a Latin word um, for mandate or commandment. So this new commandment I give you is how we get Monday Thursday, but ultimately it's a celebration mm -hmm. of the Lord's Supper. Um, when churches have Monday Thursday services, that'll be kind of centered around that idea of yep of sharing the uh, Lord's Supper together, but that's what happened on Thursday night. And then of course, things really start to unfold as we get towards Friday. Why don't you tell us about that? Yes, uh, you know, it's interesting. Monday, Thursday kind of concludes with uh, one of Jesus's last teachings, which in John 15, it's the I am the vine, the yeah. branches, that, that whole teaching. It, you know, one of his, the last things he teaches before Friday. Yeah. And then Good Friday happens. And I would say Good Friday is Bad Friday. It it's the most excruciating, tiring um, display of humanity that you can even imagine. Yeah. Um, not just from Jesus' perspective, because you know, he was beaten and crucified and died. You know, it, it, our theology, we believe that Jesus died on that cross. And that's, yeah. that's a big deal. When you, when you say Jesus is fully God and fully man, and then he physically dies, that's, that's huge. And, and the events of the day, the way they play out, um, I think it was around 3 o'clock that he actually died. Yeah. His body comes off the cross, I guess, before 6 p.m., you know, at some point. Yeah. And he's actually, you know, taken to a tomb by uh, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, who we talked about uh, last week. But yeah. this is an incredibly brutal day, an incredibly sad day, a hard day for people that were close to Jesus. Yeah. And to go from so much excitement to so much confusion so quickly had to be just incredibly difficult. Yeah, and the, the word good being mm -hmm. attached to it is very confusing. It, it, it always has been to me. The only thing good that comes out of it is that Christ has sacrificed himself for our salvation mm -hmm. on this day. Uh, other than that, that's the only good thing you can say right. about Good Friday. So um, that leads us to Black Saturday, also known as Holy Saturday. And this is basically the day between the crucifixion mm -hmm. and the resurrection. A relatively uneventful day where we focus on Jesus having been entombed. Now, because of Sabbath back then, and, and Jewish people could not do work back then on the Sabbath, mm -hmm. they had to get Jesus off the cross and get him entombed pretty quickly so they wouldn't violate their own Sabbath laws. Yep. And um, so Saturday, they're not going to be doing anything except observing the Sabbath. And the idea would be, and it stands to reason, they're going to get him in the tomb, kind of do as much as they can, 
seal up the tomb and then come back on Sunday and finish their burial preparations and the embalmment and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. of course, um, that is not what they find when they get back to the tomb on that fateful Sunday, Absolutely. which we call Easter. We call Easter. And essentially, Easter Sunday is the reason we have our faith. Absolutely. I, I mean, without the resurrection, the disciples don't hit the streets. They don't talk about Jesus. Prophecy isn't fulfilled. We don't have salvation. And, and we don't have salvation. Nothing really changes except it did. He, he yeah. was resurrected. Um, some ladies showed up at the tomb fairly early, uh, which was k kind of a normal thing to do. They were getting out and about. Uh, and Jesus appears to one of them, yeah. or an, it, actually an angel appears and says, he's not here. And then Jesus starts making appearances. I think it's about five times he appears to people, Peter included, um, on Easter. So when we think about Easter and we come together for sometimes our big church services with beautiful music and a big celebration, it's a great celebration. But yes. for me to think about Jesus was actually appearing to people that literally just thought he was Gone, gone. They saw him dead. They right. put him in the tomb. Exactly. And they're coming back to the tomb to, again, probably finish their preparations. Mm -hmm. And look what they find. An empty right. tomb. Why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? Yep. Is such a poignant, it is. poignant. Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. So that takes us through all of Holy Week from the celebration of Palm Sunday to the celebration of Easter Sunday. Let's make sure we don't forget everything that happened in between the parades because uh, I think that's where our, our faith is deepened when we recognize mm -hmm. what Christ has done for us. Yeah. But our focus is not on death, it's on life. It is. And we celebrate. Um, so use this Holy Week to celebrate what Christ has done for you, reflect as we come to a close, and, and really to celebrate life mm -hmm. that conquers all death, all sin, and really leads and guides our lives. Absolutely. So thank you so much for joining us here on the ABCs of Faith Lenten edition. We've enjoyed it a ton. We've enjoyed having you with us, and we'll see you again soon. Absolutely.